So welcome everybody to the um, webinar, Decision-Making in Pediatric Colorectal Surgery. Um, I have the privilege to moderate this collaboration of the um, UPSA, Children's National in Wash, Washington, and the European Journal of Pediatric Surgery reports. We are also happy to have uh, Mark Levitt. He is Chief of Division of Colorectal and Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery at the Children's National Hospital in Washington, DC. And on top, we have an expert panel that you will see later and during the session of colorectal surgeons, international colorectal surgeons, um, Julia Brizigelli uh, from um, Johannesburg, um, Paula Mitriev from Treviso, Alejandra Villanova from Madrid, uh, Pim Slots from Rotterdam, Carlos Reck from Vienna, and um, our, yeah, how do you say, the heart the, uh, of everything, Gaia Tamaro from the um, UPSA office. So Mark, um, it's a big honor um, to have you here, here today and that you share your knowledge and expertise in decision-making in colorectal surgery. How are you today? I'm great, Martin. It's so nice to see you and I look forward to being together again when the world returns to normal. <laughs> great. All right, Mark, um, we change gears to Hirschsprung's disease. Um, this is a two-year-old boy with prior pull-through, has now obstructive sim symptoms, had a um, recurrent episode of enterocolitis, um, responded to irrigations, um, and now you did this um, contrast study from below. And... Um, yeah, this is obviously not looking right. So, um, yeah, yeah what, is, what is striking you in this uh, in this image? So I just want to, um, uh, yes, we're switching gears to now Hirschsprungs, and this is the, one of my favorite topics is the problematic Hirschsprungs. I think everyone feels that most cases of Hirschsprungs go extremely well, and it's frustrating when a Hirschsprungs patient does not do well but when they don't do well, we need to figure out why they are not doing well. And I wanna also uh, thank the panel. Um, we have um, our uh, main moderator is Martin Lacher from uh, Leipzig, who's helped coordinate this activity with uh, UPSA and the uh, European Journal of Pediatric Surgery case reports. Carlos Reck uh, from Vienna, uh, Austria. Um, we have Alejandra, uh, Villanova from Madrid, Spain, and Paola Midrio from uh, Treviso, Italy, uh, Giulia Brizigeli from Johannesburg, and you'll note the South African Italian accent because she is also from Milan, and Thomas Wester from Stockholm, and I'm Mark Levitt uh, from Washington, D.C., and I really appreciate uh, Yupsa inviting um, someone from the United States to uh, to join you. It's not often that we get such a warm welcoming uh, from being from this country, and I really appreciate uh, being able to be with you today. Great. So, um, so this is a typical scenario. You have a two-year-old with Hirschsprung's disease who's had a pull through and is misbehaving. And what I mean by that is he is having obstructing obstructive symptoms he's having recurrent episodes of enterocolitis he is successfully able to resolve those episodes with irrigations however the episodes keep happening and now the time has come for us to really figure out what is wrong with this pull through so uh, maybe we can get an opinion alejandra do you have uh, some thoughts about this image sure um, so here we can see a narrowing of the distal colon and a very dilated proximal colon. There is a change of size in the left colon that whether could be because a twist or an, a stricture. I don't know if the baby has a colostomy prior to the pull through or is just some tensional issue with the pull through. Or okay. as I said, a twist. Let's um let's go to the next slide and pose the question to all the viewers. 
So I will tell you the patient only had a primary pull through, um, no colostomy. So the possibilities are uh, retain suave cuff, a mega duhamel pouch, retained aganglionosis, a twisted pull through, or a stricture. So I want everyone who's looking on to commit to one of the answers. And then no, maybe. Uh, I would we, say. maybe we'll have Paula give her opinion. So if uh, I assume that we know which kind of uh, operation he had, because if he had a duomel, then you, your thinking goes in one direction. Although this aspect, radiological aspect, is not typical for a duomel retain a pouch. So it looks like more uh, as a twist, a twisted portal. Yes, and I think everyone, um, everyone on the chat has agreed that it looks like a twist. Um, um, although I do like the fact that Carlos um, um, has asked us uh, for a lateral. I also really like to see a lateral, and the lateral is really valuable if, in fact, it's a um, it's a cuff. Um, because you can see an extra space in the presacral location. Um, but it was not, it, this was a suave, but the suave seems to have been done well from the suave point of view. It was um, obviously not a Duhamel pouch. Uh, retained aganglionosis is certainly possible, but it doesn't really explain the anatomic finding on the contrast study. And a stricture in that location does not make sense, although Alejandra wanted to know something about whether there was a preceding colostomy. So that was a good thought. Maybe it's a colostomy stricture, but the patient never had a colostomy. So that one could be ruled out. And it's a twist. And let me show you what this looks like in another case. We can go to the next slide. So um, it's a different case. Uh, um, and the, you can see this um, cutoff very distal that never goes away on any uh, image. Somehow the pull through was twisted as it was brought through the pelvis. And um, this is a great picture of the twist in, in, the, in a bird. Um, and one of the cases that I operate on for a twist looked like that. It looks like literally a corkscrew going down into the pelvis. So let's pose some questions with the next slide. Okay, so let's just let's discuss this. Martin, what is your approach to avoiding a twist? So uh, my approach is to do never do pure transanal Hirschsprung's pull through. I always do a laparoscopic dissection from above, and then after the pull through, do laparoscopy again and make sure the mesenterium is posterior. And um, I have actually a very nice video of a twist. Uh, which was then appreciated with laparoscopy during the operation and then detwisted, and then we did the um, anoplasty. So laparoscopy, I think, is the, is the key to me. Now, Julia, when you do a twist, do you do it the other way because you're in the southern hemisphere? <laughs> I was thinking of that. Surely I do. <laughs> okay. So um, does anyone else want to give their ideas of how to avoid a twist? If, if you go well, laparoscopically, you, you're safer. But if you still want to go only transanal, as soon as you detach some of the rectum, you put a stitch of a different color at 12 o'clock or 6, 6 o'clock, you decide, and it stays there, has to go um, has to be your marker that that is the original orientation. Let me go to the next slide. I want to show Paola's technique. You can see um, um, here in this case, I think to um, demonstrate Paola's idea, we put a stitch exactly in the midline. And again, you can choose the top or the bottom. And I actually put several such stitches and make sure that they remain aligned. But I can promise you, you can still do a twist. 
you can still do 360 degrees. So go go back back one slide, Gaia, please. One back one. Okay, um, Pim, what is your trick? Well, at the end of the procedure, what you can do is to detect a twist. If you think you made one, just to put a Hager into the colon to see if it passes easily. Yes, and I also think to reaffirm what Martin said, even when you're doing it laparoscopically, you can still twist it, but at least you can watch and double check the pull through with your laparoscopic view. Okay, now this is an interesting question. In this particular case, there is clearly proximal dilatation above the twist, but is that always true? Has anyone seen a twist in which the patient did not have proximal dilatation? Can the twist be intermittent? Rather partial instead of intermittent. Probably not 360 or like 180 or something like that. Yes. Yeah, so th if that's the case, maybe it won't be dilated proximally. And sometimes it's very hard to know that that's what happened because you don't see proximal dilatation. You have to be suspicious of it. I can tell you I've had the circumstance where I looked at a contrast study and it appeared normal. And then I examined the patient under anesthesia because something I knew was wrong with the pull through. And then in retrospect, I re-looked at the contrast study and then I saw that there was evidence of a twist. And the point I wanna make here is how do you do a rectal exam in a post pull through Hirschsprung's patient to detect whether or not there is a twist? So what I do is I do a rectal exam and I like to palpate my finger by putting my hand on the abdomen. And if I can feel inside the abdomen, then I know there's no twist. However, if there is tissue between me, my finger, and my hand, and it sometimes feels abnormal and you can't quite get into the abdomen, that's evidence that there may be a twist of the pull through. So it's not so easy to detect, but if you do a careful exam and a good contrast study, you might find some of these. But Mark, can I ask you, in a, in a two year old boy, which is probably 15 kilo, uh, 14 kilos weight. My index finger is only seven centimeters long or eight. So I might not, well, yours is longer and PIM is longer too. So, <laughs> but my finger might not be able to reach the twist. And so the, the, the attempt to feel your finger on the abdomen in a two years old may not be possible even if it's not twisted. You know what I mean? Because my fingers are short, I mean, for a two year old. I, I understand that uh, limitation. And if that's the case, you may need to do a rigid sigmoidoscope or look, yeah. make sure you look in and uh, or a flexible sigmoidoscope and make sure you uh, don't miss a twist. Okay, um, because we're talking about Hirschsprungs, I wanted to um, discuss another technical challenge, and that is if you have a size discrepancy between your colocolonic anastomosis, the colon part of the pull-through, and your um, colon that's just above the anal canal, what happens if there's a big circle that's being connected to a small circle, does anyone have any advice for that situation? Uh, Thomas, do you have any recommendations for that technical problem? Well, I, I, I think it's, it's quite a common situation that there is a discrepancy between the size of the proximal colon and the, and the anal canal. But I, I think that usually it, you, if, if the, it's not too much of a discrepancy. It's possible to 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 placate the proximal colon and and to adapt it to the uh, to the anal canal. And I, I think long term that will uh, the, the the 
discrepancy will, will get less and less. Anyone else? Pim, do you have any thoughts on this technical problem? Um, if the colon is too wide, maybe you should go somewhat higher up where it's more um, not so wide, it's more thinner. Or you do application, but then it's a very uh, difficult anastomosis to make them. I didn't mean to, I, I, I was meaning to do not placate in one location, but to try to do a harmonic anastomosis without uh, too much of, of a discrepancy, but not, not to do a formal placation in one location. Martin, you want to show us something? I'm not sure whether. So we did the first pictures of the anoplasty, and then this is the laparoscopic view again, and you see the mesentery running actually over the uh, the rectum, and now you recognize it, and you deep twist it until it looks right again. Uh, and that's why I like actually the um, the laparoscopic approach to to Hirschsprungs. That's beautiful, Martin, that's very nice. It doesn't look nice super smooth. This Martin, this was after your anastomosis or only at the beginning of the anastomosis? Oh, this was just after the, this was just after the 12, clock stitch ah so one stitch only yes if, if the 12 I would, clock stitch of anoplasty and then I, I predict that if i would have made a twist i would have only realized it after i had completed the anastomosis right. the fact that you realize it before you complete the anastomosis speaks to the german efficiency <laughs> My one question that I had asked before, if you can go to the next slide, I want to show you a very nice trick. It's very useful when you have a big to small circle. Um, next slide. Yeah, so what I do here is I put a stitch from at 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock as the first step. And then I take all four of those and put them on mosquitoes. And then I hold the mosquito apart. I hold them away from each other, which straightens out the size discrepancy. And then I put a stitch in the very middle of that and put it on another mosquito. And then I do the same thing with those two mosquitoes. And I keep dividing in half every time and that is a really nice way to make a big circle connected to a small, small circle. I've done this in the abdomen too, if you have an atresia with a dilated bowel proximal and a not dilated bowel distal, and you wanna make a circle to a circle. Of course, you can taper. I'm not a fan of tapering or plicating in Hirschsprung's disease because I, didn't, I don't want any opportunity for stasis. So I do this circle to circle technique. Does this make sense to everybody? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So I, I um, let's go to Julia for a summary. Yes. So the suggested approaches to avoid the twisting of the bowel, which is pulled through, are. Uh, so given by Martin Lacker is to never do a pure transanal pull through, but rather do a laparoscopic assisted pull through um, to start with and then confirm that it's not twisted at the end of the operation before finishing the operation. Um, then Paula instead suggested to rather mark the rectum uh, on the midline as soon as you detach it from any anchoring structure around. But in this way, it is still possible to do a twist of the pull through segment. And theme slots uh, rather suggested to, uh, at the end of the operation, uh, after the anastomosis is done, test the patency of the anastomosis and test for twisting by placing a Hager into the anus. Um, 
it's uh, sometimes very difficult to diagnose a, a, a twisting because sometimes it can be either partial or intermittent. And in these cases, what happens is that uh, there's no proximal dilation. So at the contrast enema, so it might be very difficult to suspect it. Um, and um, a trick suggested by Mark Levitt is when you examine a patient in which you suspect the presence of a twist from the contrast enema, you take patient to theater, you do a proper EUA, and then you can uh, do at the same time a PR, and with the other hand, you can examine the patient from the abdomen. And if by doing this, you feel like there's a double layer, then you need to suspect that there is possibly a twist of the bowel which was pulled through. Um, um, another uh, trick that was given, which is um, um, not really related to a twist, but it's actually if you have a very dilated pro proximal colon that you need to pull through an anastomose with the anus, which has a different size. Um, so tricks that were suggested is trying to go a bit higher up where the bowel is not dilated. Um, application can be performed, but also an elliptical anastomosis uh, can be performed by positioning initially the four main stitches in the four quadrants, and then leaving the, not cutting basically the suture, and then placing mosquitoes at the edges of the sutures and pulling the stitches out while placing stitches in between. This way, the anastomosis lies outside of the anus, and it's very easy to make. I think that was a great uh, session. I really in, in enjoyed it and also to having so many friends online at the same time. Uh, I did not expect it to be that long, but that tells me also how much lessons there are to learn and how much tips and tricks um, there are to share. Uh, I thank everybody for joining today and I hope the UPSA community or the Facebook community or, or whoever um, can watch this video finds this an interesting format. Um, I guess, I hope we have a, a, a new session um, that that is as much fun as this one. Mark, you wanna say yeah. something? So again, thank you all very much. It's always great to be together. Um, obviously we wanna be really together, but we need um, one of your brilliant scientists in one of your countries to create a vaccine and then we can be together again. Um, We have a few more cases we'll do with another session. I think it's nice that each case is about 15 to 20 minutes and that can be then posted individually. And um, hope to see you again soon. Gaia will create a new invitation um, and uh, we'll do this again.